everyone, this is Calimara here, and no, it's not Calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. I apologize for the radio silence for the past month. I've had a lot happening at once, and I've been traveling back and forth between cities, and then I got really sick and had other plans fall through because I was horribly sick. Luckily, it wasn't COVID, but it was a stomach ulcer that was so bad I thought I had COVID, so I've been dealing with that. I'm finally getting back to normal now, but I did miss Halloween. Well, Mariah Carey hasn't quite thawed out yet, so I think it still counts as Halloween. So today, we've got a special topic because we are going to be covering Monster High, a frequently requested series in my channel and the perfect spooky topic. Although I personally have never owned a Monster High doll myself because they were pretty expensive and we couldn't really afford them, I always loved looking at them and reading each character's descriptions on their boxes. So I guess you could say I've admired them longingly from afar. If you guys don't know what Monster High is, they were an extremely popular doll line from Mattel that really leaned into edgy hot topic fashion that was trending among little girls who were their target audience at the time. The Monster High dolls were super unique with each character having their own face mold and articulated joints as well as additional features like fins, ears, bolts, and more. It was clear that Mattel had put a lot of time and effort into the design of their dolls, at least in the first several years of the franchise's launch, and why many of the old dolls still hold up to this day. I could go on and tell you all about the history of Monster High and the cultural impact it had, as well as their many controversies, but I think Izzy's did that way better than I ever could in their deep dive on Monster High. So go check out that video if you have an hour or two to spare. But the reason I began to really appreciate the design of these dolls was mostly thanks to the doll maker community on YouTube. I was obsessed with watching doll repaint videos back when I first started university because they always had this comforting feeling to it that always left me feeling inspired and refreshed. It really helped me cope with a lot of stress, especially being away from my family for the first time. Some creators I highly recommend are Etalon, Moonlight Jewel, Nicole Streams, Hextian, and Delightful. Their channels were what inspired me to do redesigns in the first place, so please go check them out. If you haven't made the connection yet, you're probably wondering, Kelly, what does this have to do with Monster High? So let me tell you, many of the dolls being repainted are old, unloved Monster High dolls being given a second lease on life. So, even if I didn't have a personal childhood connection to the franchise, I do have a very recent connection to it. Which is why when this movie and animated series were announced and started circulating around Twitter, I wanted to rip the skin off my body and escape from it. As you might have seen from the title of this video, it's all because of what they did to my girl Claudine Wolf. Like, sure, Frankie is blue, Laguna is pink and looks like one of those uncanny metaverse artists, and for some reason Draculaura is a witch despite already being a vampire, but compared to Claudine, design-wise, it's not even a competition. How did they think this outfit looked good in any way, or that it would be something Claudine would wear? Claudine, the fierce and fabulous fashion queen. And sure, the outfit was bad, but what they did to her personality and identity as a character is 10 times worse than any clashing pattern. No longer is she the strong, independent, tough older sister who will tell you like it is, and lives for her family and friends, meets no man, takes shit from nobody, she's just your average fish out of water and is the epitome of there are two wolves inside you. You know, the sheltered, quirky special girl who doesn't fit in and finds herself at a quirky special school where she thought she would fit in but she's just too special and not like other ghouls. Obviously, because of that, it's up to her to save the school and along the way, she falls in love with a guy who the mean popular girl is into. This is Riverdale. Or every story on Wattpad. 
I have so many questions and criticisms, so if you're hoping to listen to an angry rant, you're in for a treat. And naturally, I'm putting forth my own redesign for a modernized Claudine Wolf based off of what I think would suit her better. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. But first, I want to thank XP Pen for making this video possible. They sent me their Artist Pro 12 second gen tablet to use today, so if you're wondering what tool I'm using to make the drawings in this video, it's this adorable XP Pen tablet. I'm going to be comparing my experience with the tablets I've used so far and who knows, maybe this is the right tablet for you. Right off the bat, I love that the tablet comes in four different colors so that you can choose the one that best matches your aesthetic and make sure it looks right at home at your desk. Obviously, I went with the pink one and it's honestly the perfect size for me. You guys know I'm partial to smaller drawing tablets because I have limited desk space and I'm myself am a small person, so bigger doesn't always mean better for me. Having a tablet that's wider than I can feasibly reach while drawing is pretty counterproductive and I think this tablet is just the right size. It also lays flat on my desk which I appreciate a lot because it helps me with my shoulder issues and it's also a display tablet which lets me do work with more accuracy than a regular tablet. And speaking of accuracy, this is the first display tablet I've literally had no parallax on. And that's because the screen is fully laminated, meaning there's no gap between the top glass and the LCD. Parallax is basically when the cursor on the screen isn't in the same place uh, your pen tip is when you hover over it, and thus creates a gap between the pen tip and the cursor. The tablet also uses your laptop as a power source, so you don't need to find a power outlet in order to use it when you're on the go, which I think is much more convenient. If your laptop has a USB Type-C port, it's even more convenient because you only need one cable to get things set up. The tablet also offers 8192 levels of pen pressure and supports tilt. So let's give it a whirl and see how we go. Before I say anything else, I think it's important for me to clarify that this is purely my subjective opinion and perception of Claudine, and in no way is it meant to be the right opinion. If you have different opinions or headcanons or perceptions about Claudine, and you like the new Claudine, then that's great. All the power to you. But this video probably isn't for you, so feel free to click away if you want. Meanwhile, if you think what Mattel and Paramount did to Claudine was a money-hungry and out-of-touch way to appeal to their mass preteen audience, then this video is for you. So let's talk about that. There are two main aspects of the new reboot that I want to discuss. The first is the writing and second is the design. Because I've heard a lot of people talking about the character designs, but not many bringing up the character writing, even though I'd argue it's infinitely worse. So let's start with the writing because I'm of the personal opinion that how a character is written should inform how they are designed and vice versa. So talking about how Claudine is written will provide a lot of necessary context for my criticism of her new design. To start things off, it's important that you guys know what Monster High as a doll line is all about. So, Monster High was launched around the time when Bratz dolls and edgier fashion dolls were booming. But the unique thing about Monster High was, aside from their edgy fashion sense, was that it showcased the character's flaws front and center. Whereas other doll lines talked about the doll's strengths and emphasized perfection, Monster High was the complete opposite. Each character had a freaky flaw that would be featured proudly on their boxes, and it actively encouraged kids to embrace what they perceived to be a flaw or insecurity and make it into their strength. Sure, the team's execution often missed the mark despite their noble intentions, especially when it came to body image and body diversity, so one thing I do like about Claudine's reboot, at least in the animated series, was that they let her be covered in hair like a real werewolf would. 
And this is significant because having lots of hair and body hair is Claudine's freaky flaw. So it seemed counterintuitive then to have that be her freaky flaw and then have her actively shave it all off. But even if the original Claudine wasn't covered in hair, I will never forget the first time I picked up a Claudine Wolf doll and how reading her box description made me feel better about my own body as a kid, even back then. So for a franchise that's literally about not being afraid to be who you are and showing your truest self no matter how freaky or unusual it may be, the movie sure focuses a lot on being ashamed of who you are and hiding your true self. Otherwise, you'll definitely be persecuted for it. And not just on the human side either. There's persecution on both ends and it's really contradictory when the franchise's original tagline was Freaky just got fabulous. As in, your differences and flaws are what make you awesome. But I get why that would be lost in translation, because the Monster High slogan has since been changed to How do you boo? Which is as vague as the quality of the dolls that were released following it. So it makes sense if the big producers in Hollywood miss the memo. Because we all know that those guys can't be bothered to do a lick of research about anything except what will make them the most money. But you know what? Freaky Just Got Fabulous will always be Monster High's tagline in my heart. And getting back on topic, I just think the choice of using Claudine as the main character in the narrative standpoint of the 2022 movie and series is the wrong choice. Claudine was never a sheltered, fearful, insecure person who just wants to fit in. In fact, she's the most self-assured and confident character in the series, and her fearlessness towards not fitting in and standing out is one of the reasons why her friends love her and why I love her so much. Sure, that isn't relatable to most people. Heck, I don't relate to her on that regard either, but that doesn't mean I can't love and admire her as a character. And I get it. Nowadays, it's all about being relatable and making your audience go, OMG, that's so me, like every other Netflix original teen movie. And I know the point of making a sheltered character who knows nothing about the monster world is so that they can discover it alongside the audience, but if that was the angle they wanted to go with, then Claudine was just the wrong choice for a protagonist. That would have been like Disney wanting the audience to have a naive, optimistic view of Zootopia by telling it from Nick's perspective instead of Judy. But on top of that, they also completely rewrote Nick's character so that he's still a naive character oblivious to the harsh reality of the city, but Judy is there too and she's still a newcomer to the city with the same outlook. And you're probably thinking, surely that's not the case for Monster High. Except it is, because in this case, Judy is Frankie Stein. If you ask me, they should have kept Frankie as the main focus of the reboot. And my reasoning for that is because Frankie is literally the sheltered, naive, blank slate audience proxy that the writers tried to turn Claudine into. Frankie in the movie tells us that they were born 15 days ago, so they would have a very good and simple reason for having absolutely zero life experience or knowledge of the world around them, and that would have presented the story the perfect protagonist to discover the world with. Plus, they've even got the smart and nerdy but still cool aesthetic that they're trying to give Claudine. Frankie was right there. But for some reason, the directors and producers decided they needed to rewrite a different character who plays a very different role to fill that gap. So now there's just two of them. Two of the same character. The world just isn't ready for non-binary protagonists, I guess. Also, I know this video is about Claudine, but I just want to say that I really like that they made Frankie non-binary. I think it makes a lot of sense because they are an amalgamation of a bunch of different body parts from a bunch of different people, regardless of their genders. And they, them is used as both a pronoun and also to refer to a collective, which Frankie is. They are a collective. It's probably one of the few good calls that the reboot made. They should have stayed green though.
But getting back to Claudine, I really dislike that the reboot made it such a big deal that she's half-human when there is already a half-human character in the original series where his lineage is literally not an issue. I think it's unnecessary and it feels like a generic main character trope. And the only other reason I could think of as to why Claudie needed to be half-human was so that she wouldn't know anything about the monster world before the start of the movie and to make her more special than all the other monsters in the story, even though she's already the only werewolf there. But as Syndrome said, in a world where everyone is super, no one will be. It's just wasted potential in my opinion that in a world literally about monsters where background and design wise anything goes, even half harpy, half centaur creatures, the main character's quirk is that she's half human. And that's the plot? It's not even a good addition because it ends up taking away more from the character than it adds. For example, Claudine's siblings, who were completely cut from the reboot. Originally, Claudine had an older brother named Claude and a younger sister named Howleen. These two are a big part of who Claudine is because they're her pack and Claudine is all about her family. But if they included her siblings in the reboot, then Claudine would be less unique because she has two other siblings going through the same thing she is, and Claude would have had to have attended Monster High before she did. That means she would have already known about Monster High even if she hadn't been old enough to attend. And I guess it would cut out a lot of the melodrama and angst of her feeling like an outcast that nobody understands what's cool. There are two wolves inside of you, because her brother would already be attending. And I guess the writers thought that that would ruin the Hogwarts letter reveal too, so that's probably why he doesn't exist anymore. Honestly, this Claudine feels a lot like one of those kids at the school playground that would pretend they were animals and would bark and growl at the other students, but instead of eventually growing up and realizing how cringy their behavior was, they got a whole movie validating them. And now they'll be like that forever. And I'm not saying that out of malice, because I was one of those kids. Also, can we talk about the horrendous decision of pairing Claudine up with Deuce. Deuce Gorgon. Claudine has pretty much been adopted as a lesbian icon by the community around Monster High, so really it would have made more sense for Claudine to get with Cleo in an enemies to lovers way. But this is Nickelodeon, so I highly doubt that they would let something like that air. But really, I'm more upset that they broke up half of the most iconic couple in the entire Monster High franchise and did Cleo so dirty. She and Deuce are together because they love each other's freaky flaws, but in the movie, Deuce literally breaks up with Cleo for hers. But the worst part of this is, is that it completely changed Claudine's characterization as a fiercely independent young woman who unlike the other ghouls, couldn't care less whether she had a partner or not. Heck, that's part of the reason why people adopted her as a lesbian icon, because she didn't have a guy that she was into. And so they assumed that she must be into women. And of course, that's a completely awesome interpretation that's supported by the creator himself. But that was one of the main reasons why I thought she was so cool. She actively stated that she didn't want a partner at all, and I find it really admirable that she's content with being by herself and not needing anyone else to complete her. That was so cool to me. It made me realize that relationships aren't the end-all be-all of life. If someone as cool as Claudine isn't concerned with finding a partner, then I shouldn't either. You're complete just as you are and you're not any less just because you don't have a significant other. So really, Claudine also worked as an icon for the Arrow Ace community too, and it's sad that we lost both of that. I just find it funny that in an attempt to be more inclusive, the showrunners ended up taking away representation. And that's just touching on the writing aspect of Claudine. Design-wise, 
I'm sorry, but Claudine looks like a BuzzFeed writer, and I do mean it in a bad way. It's such a shame because the actor that they cast to play Claudine is literally perfect for her, and they have somehow made her look so frumpy and crusty that it's impressive. This outfit is giving early 2010 Disney Channel a decade too late. It's giving girl who went to an all-girls Catholic school and always had to wear a uniform all her life finally gets to pick her own outfits. It's giving homeschooled kid. And I was a homeschooled kid, so I know. I only wanted to wear cargo pants and khakis when I was homeschooled, and I thought I was really cool. Also, why did they give her glasses? In the Monster High canon, werewolves have excellent eyesight, hearing, and sense of smell. It was one of the things Claudine was proud of about herself. It's because she's half human, isn't it? Has to be. And the movie still has the audacity to try and play it off as a strength. Yeah, I can open this door because of my half-human side, but it also comes with asthma and if I breathe in even a speck of peanut, I'm done for. You know, for most people, that's not a superpower. That's just daily life. The glasses are also awful from a design perspective too. First of all, does this Claudine have two sets of ears? Two wolf ears and two human ears? According to some scenes in the movie, you can see she has human ears as well, but if she was meant to only have wolf ears, then how are those glasses staying on her face? Are they just hooked into a knot in her hair? I don't know, but it's giving Arthur vibes. Second of all, because the rim they chose is extremely thick and large, it not only takes up her entire face, but it also makes her head area extremely busy in addition to her hair, which falls around her face. Personally, I also think her glasses distract from her piercing yellow eyes and fangs. I think busy is the best way to describe Claudine's new design because when I look at her, my eyes have no idea where to go because there's so much going on. There's a fine line between being bold and loud and mismatched and obnoxious. Drawing her current look, you can see how her silhouette gets absolutely devoured by the poofiness of her hair and coat, to the point that her silhouette looks like a giant puffball, like a kid that's wrapped up in way too many layers for the winter. Claudine has always had poofy, luxurious hair. It's one of the things that she's most proud of about herself. But the difference is that her old design balanced it by making her jacket more form-fitting and simple. I have seen some other variations of her jacket from screenshots of the movie that are a better alternative than the one we see on the poster, but in my opinion, they still add unnecessary volume to her upper body, which is already very voluminous thanks to her hair. Which is why I think her animated model bypasses this completely by ditching the coat and giving her overalls. Which I'm not sure if it's any better, <laughs> to be honest. Now I have seen some people saying that apparently the movie had an extremely small budget so they did what they could and shopped for the wardrobe from local stores and such which I don't know if it's true or not because I personally can't find any estimates of the movie's budget and even if that is true I don't think it's an excuse because I've seen people pull together amazing outfits from thrift stores and the thing is I don't think the stylist really had a lot to work with in the first place. Overall, the costume designs of the new dolls are pretty weak compared to the original. And because the movie is just a glorified ad for the new dolls, clearly the fashion was modeled off of the doll designs rather than the other way around. Because I doubt Mattel, a multi-billion dollar toy company, would make the movie first give them a limited budget to promote what is arguably their biggest doll franchise, look at the fashion pieces the movie could procure and say, yep, we're basing our entire doll line on that. Obviously, they had toy designers on staff because even though the dolls in animated series didn't have the same budget constraints when it came to the wardrobe, their clothes still looked questionable at best and an eyesore at worst. And don't get me wrong, I think the new Claudine doll looks fantastic and it's clear that they put way more effort into them than the movie. But although it looks nice, I don't think it's perfect. I feel like the new Claudine doll lost the significant amount of fierceness that the old dolls had. She looks so much softer now, 
and I definitely think it's the soft wavy hair and gentle face as opposed to the sleek shapes and hard edges of the original paint job. And honestly, this doesn't feel like Claudine anymore to me. Old Claudine had this vibe of being a tough, cool older sister that you would look up to. And new Claudine looks like they made a monster high doll of a TikToker. It just feels so sanitized and kidified, which was probably their intention. That being said, I do like that she's now canonically covered head to toe in fur because that's how I think she's always meant to look as a werewolf character. But one thing I've always had an issue with when it came to Claudine, even during G1, were the animal prints she always gets paired with. Originally, it had been a tiger print, and now she has these leopard prints that I just don't think make sense for a werewolf and would have been much better suited to the cat characters like Toralai and Caddy Noir. I know patterns are meant to be visually appealing to little girls, but even the old dolls had some restraint with them. They used one pattern for Claudine's shirt and knew when to stop, while this new Claudine looked like she purposefully chose the most obnoxious, clashing patterns to overstimulate every single person on the neurodivergent spectrum within a 10 mile radius. Our dear Claudine is in dire need of an overhaul, so here's how I would intervene. The first thing I wanted to do in my redesign was give Claudine her sass back. I want her to have more of the attitude and self-assurance that she had in the original. So I put her in an open, confident pose with her hands on her hips. I've been trying to work on my drawings of minors and not make them look too mature because I'm keenly aware that the Monster High characters are minors, they're high schoolers, and I wanted to break out of my usual bad habits. But getting back to Claudine, the first item on my list is definitely her outfit. As I've mentioned before, Claudine's new design feels way too crowded. There isn't enough space for the design to really breathe and that makes it harder for the eye to pick up where one thing ends and where the other begins. See, Miraculous Ladybug and Monster High have opposite problems. Whereas Miraculous Ladybug borders on being too simple and bare, the new Monster High reboot wants to make sure there isn't a single plain surface on the characters. So where I would usually be adding more detail to create complexity, this time I'm going to be simplifying and scaling back so you can actually appreciate the individual articles of clothing. I'm keeping her three-piece ensemble of top, skirt, and coat, but I will be modernizing them to current clothing trends. I decided to have her wear her coat as an off-shoulder coat and shorten the length to a crop jacket because that's really in right now and I think it helps open up the space around her torso without covering her skirt or shirt. I do like the form-fitting turtleneck situation she has going on in the new design, and opening up the coat like this will actually allow us to see it. It'll also help create a balance between the loose and form-fitting pieces. I also want to make it so that she's a full werewolf again, none of that half-human nonsense. So an idea I had was to make her look more wolf-like. I tried doing that by adding some more fur around her face and creating more of a snout, but in the back of my mind, I was constantly questioning whether I was making her look too much like a furry, because werewolves already are kind of furries. So it was a difficult balance to strike, and I wondered if there would be any point to it because I wanted to keep Claudine's big curly hair that's going to cover up the sides of her face anyway. I thought having some fur stick out from between the strands of her hair might be a nice touch, but it might also blend in too much with her hair to the point it might not even be noticeable. In the end, the face fur didn't make it into the final sketch, which is fine because I had bigger things to worry about, like her actual face. I wanted to give Claudine the sharp striking eyes and smile that her original design had and really let her personality shine through. I think one thing I really liked about the original Monster High dolls were that they weren't afraid of making their dolls look unique, exaggerated, and freaky. And I think that gave each doll way more personality. 
So that's what I want to do here as well by giving her sharper, more striking eyes, higher arched eyebrows, and I shaped her nose and mouth into a canine snout. Next up is her hair. I actually like the new hair texture they gave Claudine, but what I didn't like about it is the cut. So although I wanted to reincorporate that in my redesign, I would change the cut of the hair. I mentioned earlier that one of the reasons I wasn't a big fan of the hair was because it fell in her face and on top of her oversized glasses obstructed a lot of her face. And one way I could have remedied this was by pulling the hair away from her face, except that was what the animated series did with the hair bun and I still think it looks rough. Maybe even worse? I'm not sure. What I did know was that I wanted to do something with a bit more structure than either version. The easy answer here, although a bit on the nose, was a wolf cut. Wolf cuts are usually done on straight hair, but I've seen plenty of examples on curly hair that I think looks great, and I wanted to do that for my redesign. Basically, the idea is to create layers and give her a wilder look. I've started detailing hair on top of my line art because I think it looks softer and more detailed, so we'll see how well I'm actually able to build that structure later on. Right now, I'm just creating the basic shape for the base colors that I will be building on top of. By the end of the sketching process, Claudine's design felt a bit too empty for my taste, so I experimented with different animal motifs I could do, starting with prints and then fangs to hold the skirt together. But in the end, I decided on a ring and chain combo as a belt and skirt ornament, and I think it matches the necklaces she has pretty well. And getting to the line art, this is where the XP Pen Artist 12 really shines. The lack of parallax on this tablet is amazing for drawing line art because I'm able to pull my lines more accurately and it's saving me a lot of time from redrawing the same line over and over. There's also virtually no lag and the pen sensitivity is great, as you can see from how dynamic my line weight is here. I've been feeling a bit burnt out lately and being sick has really thrown me out of my routine, so I've just been sluggishly easing myself back into the swing of things. I haven't gotten to practice and experiment with my art at all and that's been making me feel pretty dissatisfied with my work. I think a big part of that is just not drawing anything for myself lately because I'm just pushing out content for my videos. So that's definitely something I've been wanting to change about my habit too. While working on the line art, I was very conscious of how plain her top was and taking into account that this is meant to be a doll design where the philosophy is the more tiny choke hazard parts and flashy detail the better, I needed to add some flair to really help Claudine stand out. I essentially ended up giving her a tube top over her turtleneck, which is going to be a mesh material instead of opaque fabric with gold thread coiling down her arm and around her neck that I will color in later on. When filling in her base colors, I mostly kept her signature color scheme of brown, gold, purple, and black, though I did add in some lilac that I'm planning to give a hollow sheen to, as well as a lighter colored jacket to add a bit of contrast to the color scheme. She ended up looking like the ace flag and honestly, it's probably my personal biases subconsciously influencing me, but I'm kinda down for that. So I'm shading her in and I'm mostly picking colors that would make the shadows look vibrant and not a muddy mess. I saw it on a tutorial on TikTok, and what you do is basically slide the color wheel to a slightly different color, either towards the warm side or the cool side, and then pick a color that is both darker and more saturated than the base color you're using. I added some more color to the shadows, then included some blushing to make her look extra vibrant, and then I moved on to her makeup. I decided to do an ombre lipstick look for Claudine because that's really popular right now and I think it looks especially gorgeous on black women. For her eyeshadow, I wanted to do a smoky eye look as something of an homage to the black eyeshadow trend that every goth girl wore in the early 2010s MySpace era. 
because that was really the subculture that Monster High is inspired by and that's something that the current reboot no longer has. Hence why I said earlier that it feels too sanitized. And it's not like there isn't a modern equivalent to that subculture. To name one example, grunge fashion. There are so many grunge outfits that would have fit perfectly on a Monster High doll. Actually, I would love to redraw Claudine in grunge fashion because dolls have to have different outfit sets, right? Let me know if you guys would like to see that. But for now, I'm focusing on adding highlights and I'm using my highlights to show the fact that Claudine is, in fact, covered in fur. The way I'm doing this is by pulling individual strokes to kind of simulate fur strands as opposed to a smooth sheen that you would get on skin. And now we are moving on to her luscious mane. So this is the moment of truth. My main goal with Claudine's hair is to create those signature wolf cut layers by establishing strands of different lengths. So that meant a lot of blocking, layering, defining, and redefining until I get the shape and structure that I want. Which is why I find it so much better to detail her hair on the top of the line art. Because you have the freedom to freehand the shadows and highlights, the strands and layers, which I think makes the hair look much softer and more realistic because you can't see the hard line art, which I'm mostly using as just a guide. If you're interested in drawing hair this way, the most important thing is to build the texture in layers, starting from the darkest color and stacking the lighter colors on top. If it starts to get too undefined, you can go over the shape again with the darkest color and adding dimension with the lighter colors. I had to constantly reshape the hair because I got carried away drawing the curls and accidentally made the whole thing look like they're the same length, which was my main problem with her original hair. Whereas the shape I'm aiming for should have shorter strands toward the top of the head and longer strands toward the bottom, creating more of a wild, choppy, tapered off look. I don't usually draw a lot of curly hair, so I always get excited to try out new hair textures, but it is a trial and error process for me. The last curly haired character I drew was Alia Cesare from Miraculous Ladybug, and ironically enough, I actually referenced Claudine as one of my inspirations for that redesign. So I guess we've come full circle. In the end, I'm pretty happy with how the hair looks. I used the highlights to try and differentiate the different hair segments and create more of a three-dimensional appearance. And I'm really pleased with the taper because it created space between her hair and her coat, which creates a much better silhouette in my eyes. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. But after staring at Claudine's face for a while, I became uncertain with her dark eyeshadow. I just think it's a bit too heavy and makes her look too mature, like she's in her 20s, so I decided to switch it to a lighter color and I like that much better because it also matches her lipstick. Finally, we're moving on to her clothes, where I am starting off with some wolf paw prints for her turtleneck because animal prints are a staple for Claudine and I didn't want to do feline prints because Claudine is a werewolf and werecats are also a thing in the Monster High universe. I added some leather scales to her tube top for some extra detail so that it doesn't look too plain, all while shading and shaping to make her look more three-dimensional.
Then I moved on to her skirt to give it that hollow effect and make it look more visually appealing. I wanted to make some of her articles of clothing reflective as a reference to the moon, because the moon reflects the sun's light and werewolves are inexplicably tied to the moon, which I think they were trying to incorporate in her design in the reboot, just in a very heavy-handed way. Because her legs are cut off, I wanted to mention that I imagine her wearing these thigh-high boots to pair with her skirt and complete the look. Once I was happy with the skirt, I moved on to Claudine's coat which I considered also putting the paw prints on as a hollow effect, but I ended up liking it more being on the inside of the coat. I proceeded with my original plan of making the outside hollow and reflective to match her skirt, and I think it added a nice light element to the overall dark color scheme. I used the same technique as I did in my nightingale video to create the hollow effect where all you need to do is pick a light blue and a light purple and blend them on top of each other for that reflective effect. With the main body of the coat done, it was time to move on to the fur trimming which required a different shading technique. The way I go about drawing fluff or anything with fine strands is to pull individual strokes and block out the shadows. It's easier to do this with a larger size brush with stroke texture because you can fill in more space while creating an illusion of strands. Once I was happy with the shadows, I layered them with lighter colors to blend everything in and make it look soft and three-dimensional. I made sure to cover up the line art as well to make it look extra soft and more natural. This technique is super easy and instantly makes your drawings look more detailed and painterly, so do give it a try. Once I was happy with the coat, I moved on to the gold accessories. My technique for shading metals is to use darker colors to create structure and dimension, like in this case where the threads overlap with each other. It's helpful for defining where a design starts and ends or to separate overlapping metals with each other. <laughs> The next step is to add blocks of light. This is my favorite part because it instantly makes everything look shiny and it's so easy. Just pull a few strokes with different widths and you're pretty much good to go. It also helps to add an add glow effect or a glow dodge effect so that it stands out even more. You can blend it out if you want to, but I personally think that for metals, it's better if the shading is more defined and blocky to create more of a metallic appearance. And finally, we move on to shading her eyes, which is always my favorite part of drawing, so I do it last. I kind of messed up on this part because I completely forgot what wolf eyes looked like and gave Claudine vertical pupils, which is a feline trait, but I do end up fixing this later on, I promise. Because Claudine is a full-blooded werewolf again, I'm not going to give her any glasses because she doesn't need it and I don't want to overcrowd her face like the original design did. I want to really draw attention to her striking yellow eyes and make them look like liquid pools of gold. And you can see me realizing my mistake here and redoing her pupils. And consequently the rest of my shading. I shaded in her nose, which I wanted to look like a dog's nose. Then I added the light to her eyes and some extra glow effects to make her eyes brighter and look like they're actually glowing. And after some finishing touches, here is the final result. I'm really pleased with how it came out. I think the brush strokes look amazing and I'm very happy with the XV Pen's performance. Let me know what you guys think of my redesign in the comments below and who you would like to see redesigned next. And that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I want to give a very special thank you to my lovely pond dwellers for supporting me on Patreon and to XP Pen for sending me one of their tablets. If you would like your own Artist 12 Second Gen tablet, you can get them for up to 10% off using the links in my description.
If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art, tag me on Twitter or Instagram. If you want to chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want to see more of my stories, check out my comic and my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!